Well, a Fox News alert, we now know missing Malaysia Flight 370 was deliberately diverted. And today the investigation turned to the crew and passengers aboard that plane. Well, who may have been responsible for the aircraft's disappearance and what could their mission have been? Let's ask aviation expert, retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dan Hampton. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for uh, having me back. You say that this is unforgivable, the way that Malaysian officials have, have handled this. I mean, it's taken them a week, essentially, to, to go into the pilots' homes. Yeah, it, you know, it would have occurred, I think, to, to anybody else running this investigation that when the, the likelihood that this was a catastrophic failure of some kind had passed, that the next, the, the next thing you do is you, you try to ID the person responsible, because if you know who it is, then you can figure out why they're doing what they're doing and then make an educated guess about where the aircraft might be. I don't know why it took them a week, you know, to get to this point. So, Dan, given what we know about the flight pattern, the change in altitude, the sudden turns, and the fact that it apparently was aloft for eight hours, how would you rate the skill of, of whomever was piloting the plane? Well, I think the changes in altitude could probably be explained by possibly a fight in the cockpit. Uh, the chance of both guys in the cockpit, and we're making the assumption that it's one of them, the chance that both of them are in on this together is pretty far-fetched. As I said, uh, last night with Judge Janine, I think they need to look at maybe was there somebody in the jump seat, you know, that's unaccounted for on any passenger manifest. Yes. Also, a 777 has a couple of uh, areas, bunk beds, where backup crews for longer flights can stay. So a stowaway is also not beyond the realm of possibilities. If that was the case, whoever it was would already be on board. Are those, and but wait, I'm part, part of my ignorance, are those bunk beds within the, the secure cabin area? No, but, uh, uh, you know, again, it, it wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility that somebody could, could get on board uh, in advance and be there. So these are all things that need to be explored. The jump seat, on the other hand, is inside the cockpit. Okay. So if somebody was masquerading as, as, as a pilot, they could already be there. Right, and then, of course, they wouldn't be on the manifest, so they would be, you know, slipping through the cracks there. We had a former Secret Well, they, they, would be on a, they would be on an American or European airliner, but Air Malaysia, who knows? Right, uh, you know, one more, one more reason why there are so many uh, right. mysteries surrounding this. We had a guest on earlier, a former Secret Service member, who, Dan Bagino, he said the, the flight pattern, the changes in the elevation and the, the zigzag nature of it uh, could possibly be explained uh, by uh, the, the pilot of this plane trying to ram it into another airliner. What's, what's your thought of, of that possibility? Well, at this point, with no real hard evidence, I don't think you can discount a whole lot of theories. So my hat's off to him for out-of-the-box thinking. But that's one of those things that, that sounds good on the ground, but translating into action is something completely different. And, and here's why. Neither of these two guys were, were military pilots. They weren't fighter pilots. And, and taking two aircraft and trying to do what we call an intercept, on them at night with closing velocities of over a thousand miles an hour and no airborne intercept radar on board the airliner itself so he's having to use his eyes is probably a, a bit of a stretch add to it two more things all all commercial aircraft have what's called a tcas which is a tra traffic collision avoidance system right think of it like the oral warning you get you know in your car when you back up and you get too close to something it's kind of like that on steroids. So anything that got within five or ten miles of another airplane, the crew of that airplane would be alerted and they would, they would move. And again, without a fighter jet that can get up to seven, eight, nine Gs, which you can't do with a 777, you're not going to be able to maneuver very well to, to hit something. So given and, what... And, you know, his other, point, his, other, his other point was that, you know, that might explain why the plane went off to the west. But if I was going to look for something to ram, I would stay in an area where there were more aircraft, which would be over the South China Sea. I wouldn't head off into uh, the Indian Ocean. Right. Well, that, that's a great point. Given what we know about the behavior yeah. of the plane, do you think it would have had to have been a pilot, a trained pilot at the controls? Absolutely. Uh, we, we talked about this, I think, a little bit last time. Not just because of the flying, but the, the systems involved. I mean, the, the transponder... Turning that off is no big deal, but as I said yesterday, uh, the, the other equipment, specifically the data link system and some others, you have to physically get in into the computer system through a display 
and log off. And that's not something that you can just intuitively sit down and do, you know, without having done it before. Yeah. Dan, our Peter Ducey reporting yeah. for us from Washington today on the latest and, and says that investigators are not ruling out that, that these passengers could be alive somewhere, somehow. Uh, we have a map that shows over 600 locations where uh, the, the plane potentially could have landed. What do you think that possibility is? Well, you know, I'm always, I'm always hopeful. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of places in the world on the mainland where this airplane could go. One of your previous guests mentioned Somalia, and that's, that's about the only place that they could go unless this thing was put down in some deserted island. Uh, because Somalia is a failed state, nobody's really in charge. I, I don't really rate the Pakistan or even, you know, a banana republic like Afghanistan very high because you have to overfly so many countries to get there. Right. So many countries with radars that could that could paint this airplane. Yes. So I, I'd like to hope for the best and hope they, they are okay at this point. You know, your guess is as good as mine. Right. Dan, thanks for joining us this morning. Interesting. No, no problem. Thanks for having me back. We built it.